So, the <laughs> <laughs> like I'm really hurt. You could poke yourself. <laughs> oh! You think they can probably read from the script? That was the one, man. That was the one, baby. Yeah. <laughs> I think that it needs to be closer. I don't feel. Camera needs to be closer. Yeah, I don't feel intimate. I want you guys to be here with us. Yeah. Get the fuck over here. That's better. Last time we posted one of these vlogs, it was just me um, trying to announce to the world that we would be back to our regular programming. Okay. <laughs> Boy, did we mess that up. Boy, did we fuck that up. <laughs> it was just kind of like there was a lot of crazy shit going on in our personal lives. We felt like the quality of the videos started to drop off and we didn't really have the time or, or motivation to put the effort in that we really wanted to put into them. We realized how fun it was to make and how fun it was to watch them afterwards, so... Really, they're they're pretty important. They're more important than we thought they would be at the start. So once we started to perceive how meaningful the vlogs were, it kind of got harder to make them. So we took a break and we wanted to wait a while uh, until it felt like we were going to have the time to release a video every week for you guys. It kind of feels like we're at that point again, finally, where things have calmed down a little bit and we can start doing the, the vlogs again. Yeah, and believe us, it's been a while. We've had this discussion for yeah. the last few weeks, and we're like, yeah, it's time to bring the vlog back. And we haven't brought the vlog back. <laughs> we're definitely gonna get back onto a video per week schedule. Um, Doesn't matter what it is. Yeah, the thing is, is it might not be a vlog every week. Like, if we didn't do anything particularly exciting over the week, like, you guys don't care. Like, why would you wanna just see us sitting around and doing nothing? So we're gonna start doing, I don't know, like, uh, gear reviews, probably, like, album reviews, random vlogs and stuff, music covers, lyric videos, like, just things in general, but we will be putting something out every week. Yeah, I mean, um, there's a lot more to us than, than just playing shows and making a vlog. Like, we always talk about <clears throat> doing different covers of different things, supporting other music and getting those recommendations out there. Just like going through the process of recording, like everything happens in this basement and you really haven't seen all of what happens. You can watch us practice the set live and it's like see what that sounds like to yeah. see an actual live practice session. Speaking of live practice sessions, we're thinking about getting into live streaming and rehearsals <laughs> and writing sessions and things like that. Um, yeah. Let us know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Uh, and if it's not, we'll probably do it anyway because it sounds like fun. If there's any of you guys even there anymore, to be honest. I haven't checked. <laughs> <laughs> it is a cool platform that we've that we've kind of made and you guys have really helped us with it. It's kind of, it'd be awesome to, to use this awesome platform that we have to help everybody out. Yeah, you know? yeah, we've been playing with a lot of really great local bands lately. So whenever we have footage of our show, like it would be great to get their footage in there somewhere so that people know about them. We've been playing with kind of a temp drummer named Quana. He, he really is a phenomenal musician. We'll plug yeah. all of his stuff in the description below. Definitely check him out. A huge thank you to Quana for, for playing drums for us for the last few months. Yeah. Unfortunately, it is just now coming to an end. Quana is moving up to New York, the Big Apple. But keep an eye on everything that he's doing, because I have a feeling that as soon as he gets to the city, his shit is gonna like get really yeah. big and fibrous. It's gonna be there's gonna be a lot of fiber. No, definitely check his stuff out. You'll get to meet him formally in the next video. Ever since we released these things happen, like we've been trying to find our sound again, start working on those demos, but it's been really hard to actually get here and really work on that. We just sit around and talk about life yeah, uh, and then go home. Things go on and uh, they make it difficult to kind of continue on with your regularly scheduled programming. Kind of just have to work on yourself for a bit so that you can get back to the point to create things that matter. It has been hard to get to that point where we can start like making things that we really care about again. But we're really excited about the new stuff and the new sound and everything that we've been working on lately. Ecstatic to start showing you guys some of this stuff. Who the fuck knows when that'll be? You guys have been hearing little snippets of things here and there in all the other videos. Yeah. So if you hear a sound or a song that you don't recognize, like it's probably a demo that we have going on. <laughs> Could be something new. And then like in a year, whenever that album comes out, you're like, oh wait, I heard the first demo of that on their reintroduction video. Yeah, man. It was a lot better back then. <laughs> <laughs> what, they really fucked that one up? <laughs> Who knows, maybe that stuff will start happening again. You can start hearing uh, our new stuff before it's new stuff. Yeah. Speaking of these things happen, let's go talk about these things happen. So, these things happen came out, uh, I think, November 2nd, yeah. 2016. We tried so hard to get it out in October. If you go back and look at all their other releases, they've all came out in October. 
<laughs> uh, yeah. Every every year we've had something out in October, and this year we did not do that. I was genuinely disappointed, really, because mm. it was never intentional to release everything in October, but then it just kind of like... All Downhill From Here was supposed to come out in April, and it took us it, until October. What a year. <laughs> 2014? <laughs> that was 2015, because yeah. 2016 was these things happening. Yeah, April 2015. Yeah, and but thank God that didn't come out in April, because Callus sucked back then, and now yeah. it's a much better song. We haven't actually made a video since we released These Things Happen, so thought we would just take a minute and talk about the album. We went on tour last summer, you guys saw that on the On Impulse tour. And after it came out, um, like a few days or like a week or so after it came out, we got these messages from people in Australia. Yeah. E evidently there's a radio station in Australia uh, what was it called? Triple J. Triple J, who plays On Impulse. I don't know how often they play On Impulse, and like, <laughs> the song is free, so we don't get any money for it, yeah. but... They didn't even ask us about it. No, it but still, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, Our song was playing in Australia, crazy. like, holy shit. That's so huge. That was awesome, man. We, I, we gotta tour Australia now. Yeah. The first place that told <clears> us they were playing our song was some college in Washington State. Yeah. Uh, still talking about On Impulse? I think we're done with On Impulse. Okay. Next song is uh, When I Leave Here, which is like pretty self-explanatory. It's just about some shit that happened. That night might have been like a few weeks before I started writing When I Leave Here, but it's funny because it's like the oldest song that we have and it's on our newest release. We kind of have these ideas and we sit on them for a while because we know they're going to be good, but then we just kind of get carried away writing other things and just kind of keep them around. That one and Don't Start are the same in that like, when I first wrote it I was like, this song is amazing, and that was like 2013, and then like, and then I hated it, and then I loved it, and I hated it, and it just kept changing and morphing, and now it's something presentable. <laughs> yeah, people like it. <clears throat> yeah, we actually performed it for the first time uh, this last week, and it was pretty good. It's like one of our two just like straight emo songs, and it was really funny because like as soon as we started playing it, just like these like emo kids emerged <laughs> from, the, from the back of the venue and came up close and they were just we like. We didn't see yeah. them before, they just kind of showed up. No, I don't even think they were there before we started yeah. playing that song. Yeah. Next song is Gamora, which is our token sad boy song. And that's really all that there is to say about that yeah, one. Yeah, it's just a sad song. Don't Start was kind of something I came up with back in like... 2014. It was a, it was supposed to be an acoustic song. We had actually planned to put it on our acoustic album, which has never come out and will be a while. We haven't talked about that in a never long time. Never even talked about that one. Um, that might happen someday. Yeah. And we and they recorded it on electric and it sounded really good. Um, and we just sat on it for two years. And even that one wasn't even finished until we started recording it for this EP. I still didn't have any leads written for that song after constant pressure from everybody else to write leads, I never wrote them. <laughs> yeah, um, it was like in the finishing stages before we even tracked lead guitar for it. Yeah, so uh, it's not really about anything. I just thought it sounded good, so that's why we did that. Yeah, it really, that's kind of always been the theme. And again, just like when I leave here, it's like we loved it and hated it. And I think you loved it pretty much the whole time, but like for me, I think lyrically and like, uh, it went back and forth on it a lot, like a whole lot before it uh, actually came to be. But that brings us to a track title. Really easily could have been the first or last song. Yeah, it works both ways. On the EP, it like uh, it represents like a kind of like a change of pace or like a capstone for everything. The the last lyrics in the song are actually like wait, you sing them, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if if this means anything to you. Just know that it means nothing to us. Yeah. And that's just to say, like, it, the lyrics in the past in our writing haven't really had any emphasis, and it's just been like, oh, here's a phrase that sounds cool, and then we would just go with it. Um, we wrote all the music, and then we just kind of, like, karaoke lyrics on top yeah, of it. Yeah, now we and just gotta, like, here's a song, We yay. just gotta fill, fit them in somewhere. Yeah. We wrote, like, all the music for the song. It took, like, no time at all. It was, no. like, there was a whole different, um, well, I guess, like, technically, 
We had, what was the song called? Um, it was called CFE. Yeah, a Crazy Feedback Explosion. Yeah, and we had written it months and months prior, and it like, once we had kind of finalized like a demo version of, of Codename CFE, Crazy Feedback Explosion, um, we hated it. And we're gonna throw some explosions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time we say crazy feedback, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, But it was just like way too angry and aggressive. Like the lyrics that I had written for it were just like a total hate song about no one. Like the lyrics it's were like just any. like really, really angry fuck you lyrics about like no one in particular. There was like one part of the song that we liked, so like fast forward like six months or something, yeah. and we're trying to, we're writing trying to come up with one more song for the EP and like we picked that one part of CFE that we really liked and then just like wrote a song out of it immediately. Yeah, just like, kind of like, because we were listening to some other bands, Balancing Composures <clears> specifically, <throat> it's like they're so good at just making their parts just flow into each other, just a seamless transition and we are like, we just, let's just try that. I think we recorded it and wrote it in that at the same time. And then the next day, <laughs> Troy came back and we were like, all right, let's make words. The lyrics on it um, are really about, this is why I called it like a capstone for for the album is, um, like they're really about like the, uh, how the way that we used to write and how we're gonna, how things are changing now moving forward. Um, which I guess brings us to the whole point of the entire album. What had happened is we had this collection of songs that we had every intention of putting on a full-length LP at some point, and then all that shit happened after tour that we haven't gone into a whole lot of detail about past that last video. We get to the point where we've just got like all these songs that that we were intending to put in an album, but now we don't intend to do that with them anymore. And like, uh, so we picked the f five, I guess, five songs off of it that we still kind of liked and wanted to release them as like. This is the old Front Royal. We just had these songs left over and we were trying to write new ones and the new ones just were not the same style. Uh, we didn't want to keep writing that old style anymore. We had a new sound we were trying to go for, just a new a new Front Royal to kind of revitalize things, kind of get us back motivated into yeah, actually doing something like productive. Back liking what we were making. Yeah. yeah, not like completely cut ties, but just finish off the past two year segment of Front Royal and move yeah. into the next one. So, so we did like the songs, they just yeah. weren't, they didn't represent what we wanted to do anymore. Like our writing doesn't sound like that anymore. No. So we couldn't justify like continuing to write and finish that LP. It wasn't gonna sound right if we had those songs mixed with all the new ones. So we just wanted to get them out. They were so good, we still liked them. <clears throat> we wanted people to hear them. So we just had to come up with some way to get them out there. So that's what these things happen really represents for us is like kind of a a place stone of moving forward like this is what we were and this is what we're gonna be now. It really feels really good. It feels yeah. like a weight kind of lifted. Yeah, and the new stuff is even better. Like we're always making better things, but the new stuff is really really excited about it, <clears throat> and it's just a whole new sound. It's cool, man. It's been really really cool. We're really excited to show it to you guys. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out of tea. My tea is cold. Yeah. Let's go get more tea. All right. So wait, what are we talking about now? Album of the week? Yeah. Troy's album of the week. Troy's album of the week. Yeah. Some kind of graphic out there. Fairy dust and graphics, and maybe some confetti and like an explosion. Just like all, all around though, like <laughs> every corner. All right. all right, man, what's your album of the week? Well, um, my album of the week is kind of an older one. Um, it is called The Great Awake by the Flatliners. They're significant because they were pretty much the main reason why I even wanted to join a band back in junior year of high school. Hmm came across them because I was just trying to get to go, I wanted to go to shows. Like I hadn't really been to many concerts at that time. So I was just like seeing what is going on in DC and Baltimore. And I saw this band called the Flatliners and their press photo for the website actually looked really cool. And I was like, those are like cool guys. So I'm gonna listen to them. <laughs> and they've stuck around with me ever since because they're, I just love them. So that, that show that you went to in DC, was that the show? No, actually. That's the show? The show that I was <clears throat> gonna go to yes. was at um, 
It was like the Talking Head stage or something or other in Baltimore that got shut down a bunch of times. Oh, um, because it wasn't Echo Stage. It was something else. No, I, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. I do not remember the name. If like, you remember what this show, it yeah. was like the owner was like taking pictures of chicks in the bathroom or some shit, and so they got yeah. shut down. They got shut down a couple times. Yeah, they, so that was the most recent and final time. I yeah, mean, I think there was cameras in the toilets, and that <laughs> like was it. Talking that. Head Club or something or other. Yeah, something like that. If you know the name. Post yeah, in the comments. remind us. It was supposed to be that one, and then uh, that one didn't work out, so then they were playing at the Rock and Roll Hotel with Anti-Flag. That was the show, uh, me and my friend Quana, who we mentioned earlier, were going to that show already, and then he was there too, and he and I had like a health class together in sophomore year, so yeah. I was like, hey, I know that guy. <laughs> and then like, I don't know, a few days, like I found out that he played guitar, and a few days later he joined our high school band, which yeah. was called Go By Night. And at the time, it wasn't called Good By Night. At the time, it didn't even have a name. No. But, and we, were, me and Quana, were putting together this like '90s post-hardcore band. This wasn't in the '90s. We're not that old, but it was like <laughs> '90s inspired. <laughs> so the Flatliners, that album that you, the album of the week, is that the one that you and I were listening to a few weeks ago? Um, the one with that like one super crazy song that I was like, this album is awesome. Oh, Shithawks? Was it Shithawks? Yeah, yeah, Shithawks. Um, <laughs> that was. Uh, that song is on the third album. That is not my album of the week. Okay. But the album before that, The Great Awake, is my album of the week. Nice. So listen to The Great Awake by the Flatliners. Solid album recorded in Detroit. And if he's wrong, yeah. fucking tell him he's wrong. Yeah, so sometimes you gotta hear that. Let me know that my musical taste sucks. <laughs> Tour tip of the week. Yeah. Tip of the Imagine like a graphic of Starship like coming across the screen. Yeah. It's like. Vroom. Yeah. It and it just says tour tip of the week. Yeah, then it skids away. Yeah, it skids away like <laughs> You know what? This is a pretty good one. Bring tools with you. I just keep these in the van at this point. Yeah. These are all my tools because shit breaks all the time, especially if you drive Starship or any similar beater. Imagine you're driving through Indiana and suddenly <laughs> your muffler is on the ground. Yeah. Uh, so you're gonna need one of these. <laughs> you're gonna need some tools, man. That not that happened. Us, for I mean, sure. We have footage, you can see it in the On Impulse 4 videos, yeah. footage that we gathered of you and Sam fixing the yeah, Go back the like video. like three videos and yeah. that's us fixing the muffler. We still don't have it. Still yeah. Uh, actually, it's back here. Yeah. It's sitting back here. It's not attached to the van. No, it's inside the van, which is not where it's supposed to be. Yeah. I mean, it's a pretty good tour. It's pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This has been. Your tour tip of the week. I can't do that because I'm scared. <laughs> that was Joey. Oh shit, Joey's here. Where were you on the night of the bird? I was murdering, not murdering someone. Oh. He's innocent. Okay. All right, you can go. Oh, okay. All right. All right, see you, man. You might remember Joey from the uh, house show POV. This is the man behind the camera. The guest yeah. has to open the fortune cookie. Oh, yeah. Ready for my fortune. I don't know how old you are. Also have to eat <laughs> yeah. I can't recommend that. What's the fortune? My finger will regrow without problem? No, I probably not. Self confidence is the first requisite to great undertaking. Mm. You heard it here first, folks. Self confidence, key to everything. Oh. Viewer question of the week. What should our viewer question of the week be? For real, though. Give us a bunch of tweet at us. Yeah, give us some suggestions for viewer questions. You guys ask us some fucking questions. Why do we gotta ask all the questions? Yeah. So um, ask us a bunch I'm of questions. Confident about my hatred of and you. We'll answer all your questions in the video or something. Yeah. yeah. Ask us questions. Yeah. We like questions. We like you guys. Come. We hate you. We love you guys. We're really back to the whole <laughs> fan like hatred. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, I guess. The videos used to be way shorter, like we were striving to get like under six minutes for everything. This one's probably gonna be a bit longer and that's uh, what you're gonna come to expect. So they, they mean something. This will be cooler, I think. It'll be more fun, more more personal. Yeah, you nice really choppy. miss out on a lot of gold <laughs> whenever you try and cut it down so much. Thanks for watching. Uh, we really do mean a video every week from this point on. If we don't hold true to that, uh, feel free to come to our homes and murder us in our sleep. Yeah, sue us. Or sue us. Either of those things. I prefer you sue us. I prefer you murder us in our suit. And I feel agree with this. We'll uh, see you guys next week. Yeah. We'll see sure.
like that's probably sufficient. 